These couple of months, I've been watching many game dev YouTubers, and the genre of videos that really caught my eyes were the I Made the Game in 7 Days Challenge. Since I like developing games and Christmas break just began, I decided to make a full horror game in only 7 days. I started out with a blank Unity project and imported all of the packages I thought I might need. Then I downloaded the free first person controller from the Unity store. I tried finding one that really fit the style of the game. At this point, I started making the pickup system. As you can see, it was really buggy. I also added arms to my player. I found a free model on the internet and I posted it in Unity. I also made the drop animation for when you drop the items. The first problem that I had was how the flashlight's light wasn't in the middle of the screen. To fix this, I added a new point light attached to the camera. This way, no matter how the flashlight is angled, the light will always be pointed to the middle of the screen. Then I got a furniture asset pack from the Unity store. I got the room's layout from one of the demo scenes from the asset pack. I decorated the room with all sorts of props and then downloaded the monster model from Sketchfab. I tried to make separate animations for him, but when I imported him into Blender, he didn't come in the T-pose. Because of this, it was, it was really hard to animate him, so I just decided to use his idle animation the whole game. I then made the Get Into Bed script. It does say Hide Under Bed, but I decided to not copy Granny, so you get in the bed instead of hiding under it. At this point, I realized that the player was way too big, so I scaled him down. Then I started working on a main player script. This script will make it really easy in the future to show if the player has the light opened or he's hidden in the bed or other things. This will mostly be helpful when I make the monsters AI. So I thought a lot and I decided to add a mechanic that I got from a fan-made game called The Joy of Creation. And in that game, when you look up, you close your eyes. So I thought that because you're a kid and uh, there's a monster, when you get in bed and you close your eyes, it's like the ghost cannot see you. So that's a way you can beat the ghost. I also made two different blanket models. One for when you are not in the bed and one for when you are. Because the player doesn't have a body, I made it so the game will be more realistic when you're in bed. The mesh of the blanket changes so it looks like you're under the blanket. So there's currently no way for the player to lose. So I made the first event in the game. The monster will spawn at the window. If you don't turn off your flashlight and you don't get in the bed and close your eyes, the monster will kill you. I'll be adding more events in the future, but this one is the first one I added. Then I added the jump scare animation for when the player dies. So currently the house is not that big. So I made the bathroom and also added a little easter egg there too. And that reminds me, I haven't told you what the game was about. My first idea was basically stolen from Overfield Dead. In his game, the player who was a boy had to spot what objects the ghost in his room moved. If he missed any, he would lose. Well, I thought of recreating that game but make it bigger. So you have to go through a house and take pictures of everything that you think the ghost moved. The problem with that is that the game would be really hard and it will be a straight copy of Phil's game. So while I was in bed after 12 hours of working on the game, an idea randomly popped in my head. You are this kid who forgot to do the chores his parents gave him before leaving on a vacation. And he had to finish all of them before his parents would come home that morning while being haunted by a monster. So I stuck with that idea. Because I didn't want to fill up the screen with UI, I decided to put all of the chores on a clipboard. I had to separate the left arm from the armature so I can animate both arms individually. I know there's a better way to do this, but I didn't find any tutorials online. I also made the battery system for the flashlight, so now when you run out you have to find batteries in the house to recharge it. I made a battery model in Blender and a texture for it in Photoshop and then I imported it in game. I found the safe model in the asset pack, so I decided I should add it in game and make a GUI for it. When you finished all your chores, you're gonna get a sticky note with the code for it. Also, you won't be able to guess the code because it will be randomly generated. Off cam, I also made a kitchen, a living room, and a parent's bedroom. And now came the hard part, making the monsters AI. To make it easier, I used Unity's nav mesh system. The nav mesh system is a way to create a navigation mesh for AI controlled characters in Unity. It allows you to specify a surface in your game that the AI characters can move along and it can be uh, generated automatically by the game objects that you have in the scene. I came up with a pretty good idea. I made areas around the house, a boy's bedroom area, a kitchen area which was connected to the living room and the parents bedroom area. 
So basically when the chase event starts, the script looks to see where the player is at. If the player is uh, in the bedroom area, which is the boy's bedroom, the monster will spawn in the hallway, which is a destination in Unity. It's just an empty game object. And then uh, he, the monster moves to that destination. So he basically spawns in the hallway and he moves in the bedroom. But the first problem that I had was how he sees the player. Because I wanted to add a collider on him, but if the collider goes through a wall and the player is on the other side of the wall, the monster will uh, detect the player and he will uh, walk to him, he'll, he'll catch him, he'll find him. So I shot a line cast from the look point, which is on the monster, to the player's look point, which is on his head. If we hit a player, uh, then we change the state to chase. If the state is chase, then um, uh, the destination will be the player's transform. So basically, uh, the monster will walk to the player if he sees him. At this point, I had two hours left and I still had to fix bugs, polish the game and make a way for the player to win. I didn't like how all the walls in the house were the same color, so I changed them up a bit. Then I made an ending for the game and had to fix this hell of a bug. So I was basically finished. Well, not really. So it's currently the 6th of January, 5 days after the challenge ended, and some days ago I added it to itch.io, and the YouTuber with 1 million subscribers played my whole game. I saw a lot of bugs and he gave me a lot of feedback, and I looked in the comments a lot and I got a lot of feedback from the comments. So I did update my game, I added also a, a cutscene at the end of the game, and other small fixes. So, so I actually cheated a bit, but I'm not in a game jam, so it doesn't matter. So here we have household hauntings. Our first chore is to put towels in the laundry basket. Here's the laundry basket. Let's take all of these detergents and stuff out. So I already know where they are because I didn't make them randomly spawn. Here we have one. And this one didn't really fit in, so let's move it a bit. And this one here. Okay. Let's find the last one. Which is, wait I forgot. Oh yeah, it's in the bathroom. Okay, now we finished our first chore. Our next one is to put plates in the kitchen sink. Like, there are six people in this house if there are six plates and six seats. But there are only two bedrooms. <laughs> Plot hole. Oh god, he's at the window. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh oh, oh oh, okay, okay, okay. So we have to go in the bed, uh, bed close our light and look up to sleep. Okay, we're, we're safe, good. We also have to take the turkey out the freezer before continuing the plate task. Let's take it out. Okay, it's done. Put it there so our mom doesn't get mad. Okay, we finished it. Now, let's find toys. Oh, where is the, where is the where? Wait, what? Oh yeah, I left one on the floor. I thought I thought we finished the plate task. No, <laughs> there's one on the floor. Okay, now we finished it. Let's find toys. So we have already one because we start with one. And also we have a battery here and you're almost running out of battery, so let's use it. Let's take the battery in the in the bedroom. Because that's where the toy box is, in the boy's bedroom. So we have one out of eight, uh, two out of eight. Let's take these ones. Oh! Yeah, so there's also a jump scare in the mirror. Um, where, where he spawns and he jump scares you. But he's not actually gonna kill you. Oh, he's again at the window. Okay. We are safe. Good. And the last one. Okay, we are done with our, all our chores. Now, we got the code. 61325. 61325. And here is the key to the house. I don't know what parents lock their kids in their house. But, we finished it. And, F to unlock. Oh god, he, he just started chasing. <laughs> he just started chasing. <laughs> At the last moment we got out, at the last moment. Okay, this is the cutscene. You can see that it's, it was made in like 20 minutes because it's really bad. <laughs> and the lighting is all bad. Oh god. Uh oh, who is this? Oh no. Are we gonna die? Even when we get out? Yes. So I loaded back up, I was un unlucky there that the window event spawned two times, but actually it, it should spawn around one out of four times the, the window event, and three out of four times the, the chase event. Oh god, he spawned, he spawned, he spawned, he spawned, he spawned, he spawned. So this is the monster, go away, go away, go away, go away. Ah! Bro, 
I didn't think he's gonna catch me there. Oh my god. I thought I could go around him, that's why I got scared. Thank you so much for watching this video. The game is way more fun and scarier when you play it yourself. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description. I had a lot of fun making it and I am really proud of how it turned out. I did put a lot of effort making this video. Actually 120 hours just making the game. So a subscription is appreciated.